Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Texas Devil Running Talk Show. This is your host, Briston Rains, and today we have a super special episode. We are with Elevate Coffee Trading, um, Michael, and then we're also with Dr. Perlman, who owns the Paramount Chiropractor and Wellness Area. I think it's in the Richardson, Richardson area, right? Yeah. In Richardson, yep. Yeah, and um, so super excited to have these guys on. We're going to be talking a little bit about coffee and how it helps your health and helps you in running. Also, guys, we have a Patreon. So if you guys want to donate a couple of dollars every month, if you think I'm doing a good job, make sure you click the Patreon link below or just go on Patreon and type in Texas Double Running. Um, and also, Elevate Coffee is putting on a virtual 5K and it's going It's going to be benefiting Run for Children. It's going to be from, yeah, if y'all are on YouTube right now, there's the, there's the picture of it. There it is. From February 11th to February 15th, uh, it's going to be a virtual 5K. So you guys definitely go check that out. Um, so let's go ahead and hop straight into it. So, Michael, tell us about some of the big benefits of coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for, for having me on. Um, you know, love, love talking about coffee in general. You know, most of the conversations that I have are, are more around the, 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 the process, the flavors, the humanitarian aspect of it. Yes. So to get a chance to be able to talk about the health benefits is, uh, is really exciting for me and actually gave me a, a great opportunity to start digging deeper into the research. And, you know, it's, it, 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 it's amazing. You know, coffee is as much a superfood, a health food as, uh, as, you know, many of the other things that you look at, like kale and blueberries and things like that. And the biggest reason is because it's high, super high in antioxidants, um, which helps, you know, reduce inflammation and, uh, you know, helps with blood flow and just so, so many, so many things. So, you know, how that translates to the body is, uh, is pretty amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to rattle off a couple of, uh, just, you know, statistics. We as Americans just love our statistics and I'm a numbers guy. Uh, so, you know, looking into this, um, it's, it's, it's the number one source of antioxidants for most of the people who consume coffee. Um, it's, uh, it, it has the ability to reduce the risk of type two diabetes from anywhere from 24 to 40%, uh, which is a, a, a huge, huge thing for, for the American population. Cause you're looking at, you know, 25 million Americans with type two diabetes and another 80 one you know million plus that uh that are pre can considered pre-diabetic whether diagnosed or or not so i mean that that's huge and and, and it has a lot to do with the liver health um mm -hmm. and so then also there's 30 percent reduced risk of parkinson's disease up to 50 percent reduced risk in uh, breast cancer 30 percent reduced risk in uh uh, car, uh, congenitive heart failure. Uh, so it's super healthy for your heart as well. Uh, 30% reduced, I'm sorry, they have a congenitive heart failure, 22 to even up to 50% reduced risk of stroke, 15% reduced risk of prostate cancer, 65% reduced risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, and then 40% reduced risk of, of liver cancer. And so the cognitive functions that have to do with coffee and, and caffeine, especially in the you know, plant-based source of caffeine through, through coffee itself, uh, has a ton of benefits in, in um, healthier mood, in uh, the way that your brain receptors interact with, uh, you know, with your, 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 um, your mood, your thought process. Um, has a lot to do with the uh, catecholamines and the in 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 the way that it reacts in the body um, can reduce anxiety, just an overall sense of of, of well being, uh, which has been which is super interesting to me because I hear a lot of people talk about you know having too much coffee, getting anxious or you know getting the jitters and things like that, which which I mean can happen if you overdo it, but uh, the super interesting that a thing that I found in that just kind of through the through the research is those that have that issue with coffee, it's really more of a um, genetic predisposition to be anxious by substances than it is the coffee itself, if, if, if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, we could, we could jump into all of that with, you know, with blood flow, helping with oxygen levels in your body, uh, the way that, the way that Coffee helps the receptors um, in, uh, in insulin and, you know, also circling back to that type 2 diabetes prevention, um, the, the way that the body can, can bind to certain other phytochemical agents uh, or the, the coffee produces the, produces the phytochemical agents that can, can help with your body uh, in so many different ways. And so uh, 
I know, I know uh, Dr. Perlman can expound a lot more on those because he's been studying the body way longer than me. So any of those, any of those top uh, statistics or, or benefits really, really ring out to you, uh, Dr. P? Well, you had me at coffee can. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, every, it's everything that you said is pretty much spot on. Uh, the thing that stuck out the most is you talked about the Alzheimer's and dementia uh, reduction by 65%. There is a very significant study. I can't quote it off the top of my head. It's deep within the notes here, but it talked about people consuming between three to five, eight ounce cups of coffee a day, middle age. So we're going to just go ahead and say 30 to 50. Those are the ones that when they study them later in life, those participants uh, had a 65% less likelihood or sorry, not even less likelihood or did not develop dementia and Alzheimer's. The reason why is because of the impact on something called uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, better known as BDNF, and people with low levels of that, like very scary low levels of that needed protein, are the people that have dementia and those like diseases. Uh, the same thing can be said for intermittent fasting. The same thing can be said for ketosis, but the antioxidants, like Michael was talking about, within the coffee itself, and we can talk about how, especially in the light roast, but that's for later, <laughs> or if we have time, uh, play a, a very significant role in the way that they support cellular function. And we talk about antioxidants just to make the listeners aware, uh, aware, excuse me, is we're talking about when we lose electrons on particular molecules in our body, and now all of a sudden they become a reactive, reactive ox oxygen species. They basically become oxidized. So in other words, what we're worried about is cells or again, these particles in our body getting oxidized. It sounds like a good thing. Like, Hey, it got oxygen. No, it's a bad thing. It becomes unstable. That's how cholesterol actually gets stuck potentially in our arteries. So I can expand on that if needed, but like, again, everything Michael is saying 100% true the, uh, or I should say the evidence strongly supports it. And that's why I think that again, uh, the genetic disposition is actually called the CYP1A2 gene marker that would make you a uh, slow metabolizer, if you will. And you can actually have more coffee, but then again, when is it going to become dangerous? Uh, that's a whole other discussion, but yes, there is a genetic disposition to having sensitivities, in which case you might end up with the jitters. You might end up uh, having an adverse reaction. Yeah. 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 And, and that, go ahead. Yeah. Um, earlier uh, off the show, before the show, I was talking to Dr. Perlman about how when I drink coffee, I don't get any effects from it for whatever reason. And he gave a really good answer. You want to tell us more uh, about that? Yeah. So it just seems like the research is very strongly suggestive of those genetic, uh, the genome, right? Again, uh, I just don't want to butcher it. CYP1A2. <laughs> and then there's another one where you're a, uh, where's this one here? PDSS2 gene. So if you have that PDSS2, you really could like, you know, you need less coffee. Like it, it, it becomes a, a problem for you to consume more. Uh, I probably have that because if I consume too much coffee, I mean, it's like off the walls, adverse reaction, can't fall asleep. Kidneys are shutting down. Now, <laughs> somebody like you might have the first gene that CYP1A2. You might be able to have eight cups all day long, drink it like water, won't ever feel an effect or barely anything. Okay. It's, it's, you know, it's a gift or a curse on one way or the other, because we also have to keep in mind then what it's doing to the underlying thing, which is really, really the big concern, in my opinion, should be, I'll, I'll just step right out there, is what is it doing to the endothelial wall of vessels? And that's why, again, I still am so supportive of coffee. And it doesn't matter who my friends are like Michael, you know? It's really, I'm supportive because the research by a guy by the name of Higgins, who's actually out of Texas, uh, one of the institutes in Texas, big meta-analysis, really put together a lot of um, uh, very different situations in testing caffeine and coffee in particular. And it's actually supportive to the endothelial of the blood uh, of the um, vasculature of our bodies um, at rest. So in other words, at rest, walking, talking, because we're not consuming coffee while we're running right? And we could get into more about that, but at rest, very healthy to the endothelial. Why? Because it helps calcium 
uh, reuptake into the cells that depend on our vascular flow. It uh, also does, uh, oh my God, calcium into the, into the cells. Uh, feeds the nit nitric oxide of our body, right? When we think of nitric oxide, we think of vasodilation, shoop, bigger spaces mm -hmm. for our blood to flow. So even if something was to constrict our vessels, it's making our vasculature healthy to be able to expand and uh, withstand that type of blood flow. Yeah, the, the, the elasticity of it uh, in terms, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of, of discussion on that. And, you know, the interesting thing is a, a lot of these uh, components that we're talking about right now is, is, is a direct effect of, of the caffeine component in coffee, right? The way that you had mentioned not being able to go to sleep. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm on that train as well. You know, if I have too much coffee, it's going to affect me later in the day and why a lot of people will stop drinking coffee, you know, at noon. Um, but, you know, outside of the caffeine component aspects of it, it just does so much in anti-inflammatory properties, Right, and and this has a lot to do uh, with the the, the vassal um, constriction or elasticity that, that that we're talking about here too, and uh, and that to me is amazing because even even decaf, the <laughs> what's the point, right? Well, all those antioxidants are still in there, mm -hmm. uh, and so all of those health benefits of the you know the the, the superfood aspect of of coffee. Um, you can still get that if you're trying to dial down on, on the caffeine. Now you want to make sure, of course, that it's not a, you know, a chemical leaching agent that's getting rid of the caffeine. You want to make sure it's a, something that has a, uh, um, what they call like either a Swiss water process, mountain water process. Ours is a, a sugar cane process, which is really interesting in the way that they molecularly can, can, can pull the caffeine out of the coffee. Um, but but I, I just didn't realize all the, all the benefits that decaf can even have until I started doing a lot more of the research. And I just thought it was because people wanted the taste of coffee. Uh, but that's not always, that's not always the effect, but man, I do, I do envy people. I know. Okay. I'm not supposed to envy. Sorry, Lord, but people that can drink coffee all night, all day. It's like, I want that next cup, but then I'm thinking <laughs> I got to get to bed so I can get up and, you know, and then get my coffee again in the morning. So I got to, got to kind of tone it down a little bit from here, here to there uh, personally. Yeah. 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 And um, as far as running goes, why should us as runners, why should we, what are like, what are some of the um, details that are good for runners as far as running long distance and the endurance aspect of it? I mean, I think it'd probably be a good idea to start, uh, first off, just in the idea of exercise in general, and then we can get mm -hmm. deeper into the specifics yes. of, uh, of running specifically. Uh, but you know, when you're, when you're working out and you're, you're tearing your muscles, you know, you're breaking the muscles down and then they need to rebuild, right. They're looking for anything. They're looking for what's available to rebuild and to, and, and to grow back stronger, and, uh, and when you have a lot, what that does is that, you know, has a whole, uh, effect with lactic acid, right. And that's what makes you sore. That's what makes it tough whenever you're, you're trying to recover. Well, uh, coffee really in the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties and the phenols and the, uh, uh, chlorogenic acids inside of it really can help to reduce that inflammation, reduce the, uh, lactic acid buildup, flush the system out of it. To where your muscles are be able are able to rebuild cleaner and re able to be uh, rebuilt faster and you know and, and, and stronger in general is that is that kind of on on the right path there, Doctor P? Yeah, I mean that's accurate. Um, what I'll do is I'll elaborate a little on what you said, and then um, maybe we'll go into one other that's component. Nice. Sure. But we have to look at it also from like an evolutionary standpoint. So let's assume we even took out the, the phytonutrients. Uh, let's just say we're like, we know how that helps. When we take the coffee in as a stimulant, let's just say within two hours post-workout. And then I'll tell you why I said that in a minute, but uh, you go into a little bit of that fight or flight state again. As hunter gatherers, we had to be ready for anything. And if we have that pick me up, our bodies know to turn it on. Now that's not a rest and repair mode. So it's counterintuitive of repairing, but you're doing that a little bit anyways, a little after a workout. And that's why I said like one to two hours, 
you already, maybe you refeed, maybe your body is going into, into repair mode, but then the coffee can actually kind of get you over that hump anyways, because it's kind of like an active cool down or what do they call it? An active uh, cool down, right? Where you're walking on the treadmill or you do a little rowing recovery. or a little cycling. Yeah. So coffee is actually helping you with a bit of an analgesic effect to actually get uh, back into that mode. Of yeah, when you, when you talk about the hunter gatherer aspect and the uh, you know, fight, fight or flight, um, always, always love throwing these little tidbits of just like the history of coffee, right? You guys know how coffee was you know, discovered or, you know, the, the story behind it. I heard there was a goat in a mountain, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a goat farmer named Caldy, right? Notice that his goats are like really active at night and like, you know, kind of kind of jumpy or you know just moving a lot faster a lot more often and uh found the bush that they were that they were feeding off of they were eating the the coffee cherries off of the off of the tree and uh then took that and you know went into the all the processes of you know eating it himself all the way down to uh to 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 throwing it in the fire and you know brewing it and and all that roasting it and everything so so you know it, it it's this natural component that has all of those effects that could help animals or hunter gatherers uh, you know back in the back in the good old days uh, to be able to use that for survival. Yeah. And do you mind if I uh, add another point? Go. So this is, in my opinion, the best part about coffee. Is that, and this isn't me promoting myself in any way because I, I do like a ketogenic diet. It, uh, the catecholamines and the sympathetic kind of activation and the way that things circulate around the body via being in ketosis, if you will, or being in a starvation mode, being in a, in a um, little bit more of a stressful body uh, uh, fight or flight, what happens is we go into like a fat metabolism when, of course, there's not really any glucose, sorry, glucose to speak of. So hormone sensitive lipase, an enzyme that breaks down fat and transports it around the body, um, it enha it's enhanced via coffee slash caffeine. And thus we are able to uh, uptake and transport and break down fat more efficiently, cleaner for longer periods of time, i.e. lose body fat, be in a deeper state of ketosis, if you will, for people who really wanna like maximize intermittent fasting and keto. And what's the one thing that interrupts that scientifically shown? Insulin. So bringing back extra sugar into your coffee, diluting it with things like milk and cream on a consistent basis instead of just taking it black and getting all the super food products from it and getting the uh, lipolytic breakdown effect. So there you go. There's a nice cheat for you and way to use coffee and really enhance weight loss as well. Yeah, two two things that you know you really uh, sparked, and 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 this Brisson goes straight into uh, you know how it helps with runners. You're talking about how it helps break down the fatty acids in the bloodstream, and and what that does is it allows your body to use it as a fuel source to where you're burning that fat. Um, you know, because you know if you're taking in a bunch of carbohydrates and things like that, and your body's converting into sugar, and you're not using it. Uh, you know, we all know this health science 101, right? Uh, you're not using it right away, then it's going to store as 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 fat. But if if it's a you know a free agent within the bloodstream, that as your you know brain is telling your legs to fire and the and the uh, you know uh, uh, signals are shooting out across your uh, across your body, you know through your veins, nervous systems, all that. Um, whenever you can use the fuel, you know your blood to shuttle that in, and it's got. Uh, a higher availability of oxygen. It's got uh, the ability to, to to burn those those fats as you're as you're moving and using it. Um, you know, it, it just has all of those positive benefits to reaction time, to speed, uh, to 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 reduced uh, perception of fatigue. You know, you may be getting as tired as you normally would, but you're not feeling it as much. Um, you know, for, for a whole host of reasons, including, including the, uh, the in, endorphins, you know, that natural hormone that produces the runner's high. I mean, you're, when you're drinking coffee, you're promoting the ability to, 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 to feel that and to use that in your, in your run and your daily activities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for, for me personally, um, even though I don't get the and I, I know uh, some other runners that have this problem to where they don't get like the high, the, the caffeine high. Do I still get a lot of the benefits that 
goes into it when running. Do you want me to take that one? Oh, I, I well, would, I would say yes. I don't have the, the, the studies on it yeah. to, uh, to, to, to back it up. So Dr. Perlman, if, if, uh, if you're going to have to, uh, oh, correct, no, I mean, correct me on this, I, I would say yes, even though it's not something that you're not, necessarily feeling you know through the hormones and the emotion um but all the all those benefits are are still there it just kind of depends on how your body is reacting to it on the inside and i would say quality of coffee Mm. preparation Mm. especially whole bean and based on that like those two things um i mean you should be getting the uh the uh you know antioxidant benefits for sure yeah um so so what's better is it better to have just straight up black coffee or is it better to put stuff in it like what what would be better for you yeah because that, that that uh was the other point that i wanted to get into whenever yeah. you were talking uh dr perman because you know you you see a lot of you know like the bulletproof coffee and you know all of these things where you're adding butter or like these mct oils and you know the, these 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 good fats into coffee because of the way that it's supposed to uh, bind you know even uh you know we don't have to get too into this but like the cbd oils and things like that the way that you know you're um they they, they have been said to couple so well to allow the bioavailability uh to be able to to, to get the maximum benefits out of that so um, I'm curious too, Dr. Perlman, what, do, what would you say on, you know, those types of additives to coffee to, to help get the extra benefits and those uh, fatty acids yeah. and things? I would say that there's really no reason to add anything to your coffee um, other than the, you know, the very, very mild, mild, mild amount, meaning non-insulin signal, sorry, yeah, non-insulin signaling or spiking amount of whatever sugar or cream or milk or whatever. Uh, yeah, if you add MCT oil, if you add coconut oil, if you add some kind of fat to your coffee, as long as it's organic, it's, you know, uh, a healthy known, a whole, you know, uh, most pure type product, then that's good if you want some extra calories. However, when you're getting something that's been packaged in the store, you're probably not going to get the uh, antioxidant benefit. It's already been sitting there for so long. It's not ground mm-hmm. fresh. It's a preservative to be able to be up on the shelf. I agree with Michael. I mean, like, I don't go for that. Uh, The the most whole bean, fresh ground, light roast coffee you can get is going to be the best for the antioxidant pack uh, punch. And, uh, you know, that's the answer. Yeah, another another little statistic on that, talking about the freshness uh, quality component and, you know, the way that the antioxidants deplete in it. You know, I've heard... uh, and there can be a 25% drop off of antioxidants within 15 to 20 days of being roasted in ground. Um, so you may not necessarily notice that effect in flavor and the body and the, you know, components, the smell, all of that, you know, cause you've got these, uh, uh, these, you know, vac- vacuum seal, you know, d- uh, two way, or I'm sorry, one way gassing valves where it's not letting any air in. So it's not oxidizing the coffee anymore. Right. But it's letting the, the, the gases of the coffee that are constantly breaking down and, you know, evaporating into the atmosphere. Um, it allows those out. And that's the area where the freshness can, can, can be depleted. Right. Because, well, if the gas, if, if the valve isn't there, then your, co- your coffee bag is going to explode. Right. Cause it's constantly like letting this gas out. And, it, and it's been doing that since it was been grown on the, on the tree, you know, uh, but every stage in the preparation process from you know, roasting to grinding to, to, to brewing when the water hits it, you know, that fresh aroma that comes off of it, all of that has to do with those, those gases that are uh, naturally trapped inside of the bean that are, that are coming out and, um, and has a lot to do with uh, the, the freshness component of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And um, I put on Instagram, on my Instagram story, um, people had some questions about coffee and we'll go ahead and go over um, one of them says, is it good or bad to have like two coffees a day or two cups of coffee a day? And I think the answer is pretty clear on that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good for you to have it. And then the other one was, does it reduce the amount of oxygen that goes to your brain? And that was from uh, Seth play official. Oh. Yes. Uh, so to answer number one um, from the research that I've seen, you know, five to six cups of coffee a day, um, it, no negative health benefits except for the you know, sensitivity to caffeine, uh, and then reduce, uh, increase oxygen. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, you know, we, if you, if we want to get into some of the details on that, I know we've touched a little bit on it, but you know, into the, the deeper details of it. Um, yeah, it absolutely helps your, your, your blood flow, uh, and helps the red blood cells receive oxygen, you know, from your lungs and disperse it throughout your body, uh, and uh, has a lot to do with a metabolic state. Um, and a lot to do with the elasticity of the, um, of the vascular system that we hit on before. Is that, uh, what, what do you got on those two, uh, Dr. Perlman? Yeah. I mean, you are not in any physiological, you know, danger of losing needed oxygen to the brain by drinking coffee. Because again, I, like I, maybe we touched on it before the show was that would be a stroke. And that's because you have a clot, you know, in a vessel on your, in an artery on the way to the brain. So again, unless you were a very unhealthy, high risk individual who did or didn't know that, that, that they should be very careful when their vessels constrict, then uh, if that's, you know what I mean? Not you, then you have nothing to worry about. If you know that you have a, 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 if you are hypertensive, if you've had a history of clots, if it runs in your family, it's worth getting a coronary calcium score in all honesty. And then from there, going back and saying, all right, now maybe I'll ask my doctor if I should be drinking coffee. But in no way, shape, or form is, is, is coffee in a healthy individual or even some unhealthy ones, you know, like a cup a day or something is not going to be the thing that reduces oxygen and puts you in a bad spot. Yeah, because I mean, the, the, the way that you get oxygen to your brain, right, is, is uh, obviously your, your heart, the you know, muscle in your body that's contracting constantly. Um, coffee helps increase heart rate, you know, in, 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 in a lot of people and that's pushing it. So I can definitely see what you're saying that if you've got a clot and you've got more pressure coming through it, then that could end up being an issue, um, for, for people that had any type of, uh, existing conditions. Yeah. And, and I also just want to quickly say, because, you know, yes, I am a healthcare professional, obviously. Yes. I'm a chiropractor. No, I'm not a medical doctor or cardiologist, but I will say the research is very, very, very strong. Don't be consuming caffeine, coffee, or related beverages during bouts of like high intensity exercise. So during, right. Yeah. Leave that stuff alone. Let the body come back down an hour after start to heal. Nothing wrong with having some coffee an hour prior, 40 minutes prior, you know, or even a you know, sip of an espresso 15 minutes before your run. That's only going to give you the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you guys touched on that because I was about to ask. Um, like when would be the best time to take it before or after a run? Um, Michael, so your coffee brand, Elevate Coffee Trading, you, whenever I met you, um, and for the listeners out there, he's the one that sponsored our 5K and gave us a bunch of bags for the winners. And he let me get a bag myself, and it was amazing coffee. Um, you told me in a really amazing story about um, the brand itself, what it does, and what y'all's mission is. You want to go ahead and tell the viewers a little bit about it? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the whole reason that we, we started this entrepreneurial venture is, uh, is the humanitarian aspect of it. Um, uh, my, my family's from Guatemala on my mother's side. Uh, my grandmother moved to, to the U S uh, uh, in the, oh gosh, uh, I guess seventies. Uh, my mom was, you know, about 12 years old and, you know, they brought all, all nine kids. Actually, my grandmother herself brought all nine kids over to the U S uh, you know, working by herself for a while, going through all the paperwork, bringing in the first, you know, three oldest boys to help work and go through the paperwork. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a lengthy, extensive process. And, um, you know, just growing up, I've always had the, um, I've always known about Guatemala. I've always, you know, been learning about, you know, the people, the culture, the, the landscape, just how beautiful it is. And not till about college was I starting to go out there and um, had an opportunity to work, uh, to go as a volunteer with this organization called Arguing for Children. Uh, that's who were, were uh, benefiting with the, uh, the, the proceeds for the, for the 5k race. Um, and we went out to help some displaced flood victims with food and clothes and, and things like that. And uh, that was the first time that I saw the other side. So, so Guatemala is like um, the middle class is just like, you know, in the U S it's like the, the, the biggest population. Well, in, in Guatemala, it's like the tiniest sliver. You've, be, you've get, basically got the haves and the have nots. And uh, you know, thankfully, you know, my family that's out there is, you know, d does well and has their own businesses and things like that. Um, but this is the first time that I've really 
been able to participate with the culture and in the other side of it and see how how incredible the dire need is there and it, and it's pretty amazing because it's uh it's true in most coffee producing countries so i started digging into that started looking into that and found out that one of my uh, cousins actually married a fifth generation coffee farmer um, and so while I was looking for a brand to create a business to start that we could share our profits with the organizations that uh, help with the kids' health and education, it was, it was, it was just a perfect, perfect fit with, with coffee. And uh, so just kind of statistically, $87 billion a year industry coffee um, across the globe, uh, yet one in 10 coffee farming families lose a child because of poverty related issues. So all this money that's flowing around is going into the shareholders, the executives, the, you know, at p- uh, people benefiting on the higher end scale of it while, uh, the workers who are producing it are getting less and less of their fair share of, of the, um, of the financial aspect, the economic aspect of it. And that ultimately just rolls down to the, to the women and children. And, um, and so, you know, you've got kids in, in Guatemala where one in 20 die before five years old because of the bacteria in the water and they're already, you know, half of them considered chronically malnourished and their, their immune system just can't, can't, can't handle the bacteria and end up, you know, uh, dying before five. And so this is all preventable stuff that um that you know coffee itself uh, through just the economic cycles of it can can actually help save lives uh so you talk about the health benefits of coffee well i mean here's just one just through the business component and aspect of itself so uh so what we did my wife and i started this brand uh she's an elementary school principal out in dallas isd uh and i you know quit my job and decided to go full time into into growing the ability, you know, growing the brand, promoting the coffee and, and, you know, serving more often uh, with the kids that, that, that benefit out there. So every bag of coffee helps support either a week's worth of school supplies, education, uh, two weeks of nutrition, or three months of clean drinking water access. We can bring these really, really, really economical and highly efficient water filters out that, um, you know, use this volcanic uh, clay and pine sawdust and colloidal silver. Uh, it gets coated in that once uh, the water uh, permeates through the through the these clay pots, basically it interacts with the colloidal silver, kills the bacteria, and uh, makes the water completely. Uh, clean to, to, to be able to drink. And so, uh, so that's why we started it. That's why we're doing it. And we're hoping to, in the future, um, expand that to other coffee producing countries as, as it goes. But, uh, but um, yeah, so it's all, it's all kind of mission based, uh, kind of similar to like uh, you know, Tom shoes or, or those types of organizations where it's a for-profit business. Uh, but we are sharing our profits more than, you know, what any typical, you know, kind of 10% give back here and there. Uh, does it's 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 embedded into our our brand it's embedded to our story it's part of our heritage our culture and everything and so uh it's a really really exciting way to do it where you know people aren't necessarily dependent on other people's donations they're you know not giving something uh without getting something in return that equal exchange of value to me is just i mean it's how the world where it should work um, and whenever you get out of that equal exchange of value, you know, things start to get really messy and start to break down. And I mean, I think we've <laughs> seen it in society uh, all around us in so many ways. And so rather than creating those cycles of dependency for people receiving benefits from, uh, you know, so many nonprofits, we, we want to be able to, uh, you know, have that increased dignity of, you know, jobs and a stable income and a higher income and the next generation of coffee farmers to be able to, to benefit from their heritage and continue to produce this, you know, this coffee that we all love so much that, you know, we really should be, should be um, aware of, you know, how it impacts globally and how it impacts uh, others and in, in, in their lives. And so that's what we're all about, man. Uh, love, coffee, and adventure. So love on the humanitarian aspect of it. Coffee, obviously, you know, we've talked about all the benefits inside of that and as a product, the science behind it, um, the, you know, all of the, 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 the different beautiful benefits that it has. And then, um, and then adventures just through that active lifestyle and what we're talking about here and, you know, running, exercising, hiking. We plan to take people out, uh, 
on eco tours to Guatemala whenever the timing's right and, uh, and travel's a little bit more comfortable for everybody. Go hike some volcanoes, you know, kayak crater lakes. Uh, there's, there's so much fun, you know, the, 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 the Mayan temple ruins out there, um, you know, just to be able to share uh, that culture, that heritage, that landscape, just the beautiful components of it uh, in an adventurous way. It's where we're doing good. We're having fun. Uh, we're helping people out. And, uh, and you know, that, that equal exchange of value happens across across all aspects so that's uh that's what we're all about man yeah that's awesome man guys it's an amazing brand and i'm going to make sure to link it all below um in the description and also dr perlman has a podcast as well um and you want to tell them a little bit about your podcast yeah so my podcast is the dr period perlman podcast so the dr perlman podcast and um i think we're about six episodes in at this point i've got three scheduled for February and March. Um, yeah, it's about really, you know, life, health, wellness, nutrition, um, you know, being active, but really just like the most natural, you know, state of wellness you can get without having, you know, drugs as an intervention and, uh, you know, maximizing so we can all just really, you know, live our best lives. And uh, yeah, that's what we talk about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be adding it to my podcast playlist I listen to when I'm in the car. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm going to leave all their stuff in the description below. And um, y'all look out on Instagram. I'll be tagging all that stuff on there. Um, but I pretty, I think that pretty much wraps everything up. Um, do y'all want to add anything else? Um, and I just re I really appreciate the opportunity to, to engage with you and, you know, your audience and uh, everybody for listening. And I just want to thank you guys and, you know, for all those uh, uh, future uh, coffee drinkers that are, you know, wanting to elevate lives with us. I want to thank you guys for, for you know, your heart and recognizing uh, what, what's going on out there. And, oh, uh, about the 5K. Yeah, if I can just kind of touch on that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so, so benefiting RE for children uh, through those clean water uh, filter processes. Um, it's going to be Valentine's weekend. So the 11th through the 14th. So it's a, it's a virtual race, but we're making it competitive. So we, we, uh, partnered with, uh, run on over in Richardson, uh, who reached out to the reps for a lot of the shoe brands, the on Saucony Brooks, new balance, all of these guys, um, who said, Hey, we'll, we'll donate some shoes to the, to the cause. And, uh, so the, the first through third, women and men placers uh, will get their first choice to the raffle prizes. We're going to be giving away uh, month subscriptions of our coffee. Uh, we're going to be giving away some really high end, you know, $150 plus coffee grinders, Barazza Encore coffee grinders. Um, you know, so there's going to be a ton of, there's actually some uh, running coaches that are, that are going to be offering their services uh, to a lucky raffle winner. Uh, for up to a month, uh, some fitness coaches that are, that are in there that uh, friends of mine that, are uh, doing some really great stuff and helping people achieve their goals. And so, so people can run it competitively by doing the Spring Creek uh, Nature Area course that we've mapped out on the Facebook page. There's a, there's a map on there, and I'm going to put a little better, uh, more succinct uh, 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 map of the course as well. But people can run it anywhere also. You know, you, if you're in New York, if you're in uh, Virginia, you want to run it uh, over in California, we'll mail you your race pack, which is going to include a t-shirt, a bag of coffee, and get you entered into the raffle. So all those prizes after, you know, the, the, the place winners pick their prizes, we're going to raffle them off on a live stream. Uh, and people can just buy raffle tickets too, if they want to up their chances of winning a prize or, you know, don't want to run and just want to buy a raffle ticket to support, still get an opportunity to, to do all that. And so, should be really fun. Uh, we're excited. It's the first time we've done anything like this. Uh, you know, I know Bruce and you and I have talked a lot about the, the in-person yeah. races. So I definitely want to give you a lot of kudos for, for putting that together. It's no easy feat. Even a virtual race is, uh, has been pretty crazy to, to, to coordinate. So, you know, good on to uh, good on you for, uh, for all your hard work and everything that you do, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Perlman, you got anything else? Well, I figure. Being a doctor, I might as well give the, everyone that's listening one last golden nugget, you know, something they can really, you know, take home and, and apply. <laughs> well, no, they don't take it home. You'll apply it, though. Uh, if you're uh, into running and you're into exercise and you're into fitness and you are taking your vitamins and your supplements, don't take them directly with the fresh coffee. Mm -hmm. The tannins in the coffee, research su suggests that especially this means like really 
kind of acidic, very fresh, um, super potent coffee is probably uh, will um, counteract the benefits of taking those uh, vitamins, minerals at the same time. So take those apart. Definitely keep taking the vitamins. Definitely keep taking the supplements, and definitely keep drinking the coffee. In what in what time frame would you suggest to to, to break those apart? Uh, so then I would say that if you were going to need the pick me up or wanted those benefits prior to your workout, I would you know drink coffee basically first thing in the morning before you or whatever like within an hour of doing your workout, mm -hmm. and then I would say the vitamins midday later in the day whatever with food you know mm -hmm. take all your vitamins take them all at once but uh, not with a fresh cup of burning, beautiful cup of joe. Yep. Yeah, with the food to. really helps the metabolism, right? Or m metabolizing the, the vitamins. Yeah, if, you, if you can get all the vitamins and minerals now sublingually, I mean, that's, that's really in you know, a liquid form is the best way to do it. Uh, not even the pills at this point, in my opinion, but. Yeah, definitely left us with a good uh, golden nugget. Um, but I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. And for the listeners, guys, make sure you guys leave a good rating. If you're on Apple Podcast, scroll down and click the five-star button and leave a nice review if you'd like. And make sure you check out our Patreon as well. And the show's every Saturday. So I'm going to see you guys next Saturday. And thank you for tuning in.